Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five ways that you can make money programming without getting a job. Now this is important because I know a lot of people watching probably aren't able to get a job. Right now it's very difficult with all the COVID stuff going on. Uh, you might not be able to get one locally, maybe you don't have enough experience, maybe you're only 10 or 11 years old. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to use your programming ability to make money on the side. And I can tell you that the five methods I'm going to show you here have made me a tremendous amount of money over the years that I've been doing them. I started as early as 16 or 17 and now I'm still doing all of these methods while even working a job and they make me much more money than my full-time job does. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and talk about five ways that you can make money programming without getting a job. So this first method is probably the most obvious and the most talked about in terms of making money without getting a job, and that is simply freelancing. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because freelancing is such a great opportunity to take whatever skill set you have and be able to actually get paid to do that get paid to use those skills. It doesn't really matter what you're good at. If you're good at one specific thing, there's probably someone that's willing to pay you to do that thing. I'll give you an example of how I got started with freelancing, but it doesn't matter how good you are to freelance. Just please don't go in with the misconception that you need to be a pro web designer, or you need to be really good at making games, you need to be really good at scripting and writing algorithms. That does not matter whatsoever. In fact, if you're actually someone who's kind of lower cost, you don't have a ton of experience, you might actually even get more clients because people want the cheaper price for what you're able to do. So what I will say is that you can freelance doing literally anything you want. You can build a website for 20 grand for a company, or you can make a little script and finish someone's homework for $5, right? It doesn't matter what skill you have if you know how to program in any capacity. So long as you can market that skill correctly, you'll be able to get clients and you'll be able to make money doing this. So I'm going to give you a very real example of how I did this and how I made my first $1,000 on Fiverr as a freelancer. So what I did was I was 17, I was just in my first year of university, I was pretty good at Python coding, and I was good at uh, making 2D games with a module called Pygame. It's just a stupid little module, you can make 2D graphical games in Python. I'd made a few before, so I went on Fiverr, I set up an account, and I posted a listing, or it's called a gig, that pretty much described what I would do. And I said, hey, I will make a 2D game for you in Python, and I started my pricing at I think like $15 for a really simple game with no animation. Then I think I went up and I said, okay, if you want animation and you want sprites and all of that, then we'll make it 40. If you want a game that's much more advanced than what I usually do, I'll charge you 75 or something like that, right? And I posted that ad. I did not pay anything for it. I just posted the listing on Fiverr and I just let it, sat, uh, I just let it sit there. And pretty much every week I had someone reaching out to me on Fiverr and saying, hey, I saw your ad, can you, you know, finish this for me? Oh, I'm working on a game, can you help me with this? Hey, you know, I need you to create this for me. Oh, I want my daughter to play this cool game, whatever it may be, right? I got all kinds of random things that I never thought I would even receive. I just posted it there to see what I could even do on Fiverr and while well, I was able to start making money. And the great thing is once you get more reviews, you start building things, you start to understand how long it takes you to make something, how much effort's gonna go into it, and you can adjust your pricing accordingly and usually start rising that price as you um, kind of establish yourself on one of these freelancing websites. So that's what I did. I just made 2D games for people with Python. I had very little experience. No one really knew who I was. Uh, I didn't have any search engine optimization or anything like that. And I was able to make over $1,000 in about two months just by doing that. So that's a very real example. I'm no different than you. If I can do that, you can do that. Just pick what you're good at, list it on Fiverr, list it on some other website, and wait for people to message you, and there you go. You'll get some clients, and you'll be able to start making money freelancing. And of course, if you're way better than I am, you can definitely make a lot more and post some more advanced ads and do things like web development and all of that. So the next method I have for you guys is tutoring. Now, this is one of my personal favorites. This is how I really got started even just with this YouTube channel, and it's something that's also really rewarding to see the person you're tutoring actually get better in improve and improve their grades in whatever class they're working towards or even just in their own personal projects, whatever it may be. Now I've tutored you know, tens of different people. Um, some have been easier than others, some have been more challenging. I've charged lots of different rates depending on what I'm doing but it just really is a great way to make money. And the nice thing is that it doesn't matter how old you are, you can definitely be a tutor. I started tutoring when I was 15 years old and I think that was probably when I was in grade 
10 or grade 11 and I was tutoring in, tutoring someone in grade 9 just teaching them really basic programming stuff, right? I was making like $20 an hour. It was really easy for me. I stayed an hour after school and I tutored the kid. He went to my, uh, my high school, right? It's as easy as that. And I even went to my computer science teacher and I said, hey, you know, I'm starting to tutor. If you have any kids that are struggling, um, you know, I'm available. Here's my number. You can refer them to me. And sure enough, he did. He liked me. I'd been in his class before. And that's how I picked up a bunch of clients as well. Then once you pick up some clients, word of mouth is really powerful if you're a good tutor and you're doing a good job. And of course you can go online and you can even sign up on Fiverr and be a tutor. You can sign up on other websites and be a tutor. It's just something that's really easy. And if you actually get better at it and start teaching some more advanced concepts, you can make a lot of money. Personally, when I tutor now, I charge well over $150 an hour, which might seem absurd to a bunch of you, but if people are willing to pay that amount, they're willing to pay that amount, right? And that's because of the social media presence that I have and the skill that I can kind of display that I have tutoring, but I'm just trying to show you that you can make a lot of money doing it. And imagine I was tutoring five people a day at $150 an hour, right? Like that's a lot of math to do in my head, but that's like $800 a day or something like that, right? You can make a good amount of money doing it and I would highly recommend you at least consider it because it really is a great way to use your programming skills and make money from it. So the next method I have for you guys is one I'm very familiar with and this is simply sharing your knowledge online. Now you can do this in any capacity. This could be a YouTube video, this could be an article, this could be a blog post, this could be a website, this could be Twitter, this could be Instagram, this could be LinkedIn. It does not matter how you share your knowledge, in what form you do it, but please do, because if you don't, you are missing out on a tremendous opportunity or tremendous opportunities. Now, what I mean by this is not that I'm trying to tell you that you're gonna make a ton of money by hosting ads on your blog or hosting ads on your YouTube channel. The reality is to make any money from ads, you have to have hundreds of thousands of people following you or hundreds of thousands of people watching and engaging with your content. Even back when I was at like 10, 20,000 subscribers, I wasn't even making $1,000 a month from YouTube ad revenue, right? So it's not a great way for me to tell you to make money is by hosting ads on certain sites. What I am trying to tell you to do though is share your knowledge because when you do that, you open people up to, to seeing you, <laughs> to finding you on the internet. And if you can have some kind of presence where someone, even if it's once a month, finds out who you are, sees your content, and maybe decides to email you or ask you a question, you've now just potentially built a new connection or potentially gained a new client or gained some new work. What I mean is like, I had a YouTube channel, huh, you know, three years ago, right? The same YouTube channel, it had like 50 subscribers. Even then with the 20 videos I had posted, people would reach out to me and say, hey, I saw you were pretty good at Python because you had those videos. Can you tutor my son in Python? He's really struggling here. Or hey, you know, I saw you were working on this turtle project. I need some help with this program. Would you mind? I'll give you 10 bucks for it, right? That is what I'm talking about. Those are the opportunities that you would never be able to get unless you had some kind of presence online and some way for people to find you and contact you. So that's what this method is all about. Not directly making money from the source of sharing information, but making money from people finding you because of that information and contacting you to do things for them. I can tell you, I've received countless job offers, countless freelance work, whatever you want. I've had an email to me about it uh, and I usually have to turn them down. I cannot tell you Oh, it's got to be probably close to 100 people at this point have asked me to be their business partners, right? Have asked me, hey, I'll give you 50% share in this company. You don't even have to invest. I just want your Python knowledge. You're going to help me make this website, right? That's an example of the opportunity you have access to when you are accessible online and people can find you through some kind of knowledge that you're sharing. Of course, you can do other things online, but building some kind of presence is really important. And I think it's just going to continue to get more important as the years go on. So the next method here is probably the most difficult on this list, but also probably the most lucrative if you're able to actually make this work. Now this is gonna to be to start a business or to build some kind of product or service that you can sell. Now the best examples I can give of this is you know, look at Facebook, look at Google, look at a lot of these large tech companies. Most of them started because one person or a small team of people decided, hey, I'm good at programming, I wanna build this, I think it would sell and I think people would use it. That's all it really is, right? Look at a lot of the apps you use today, look at a lot of the products you use. A lot of these things were not started, especially in tech, to be these massive, huge businesses. A lot of them were started because someone wanted to build something cool or they wanted to start their own business or build a product with the skills that they have. 
Now, of course, this is very challenging. Not only do you have to be good at programming, you have to understand business if you wanna make any money doing something like this, but the great thing with programming is that you are automatically just an entrepreneur. You can build whatever you want and go ahead and sell it. You can make some crappy little app on the App Store Take Flappy Bird, for example, and immediately become a millionaire overnight. Now, of course, that's an exception. Is that gonna happen? Probably not. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have a good idea or you have something that you wanna build, just build it and then try to sell it, right? Put it on the App Store, run some ads on it, charge a buck for it, make some service that maybe you can sell to a company or something like that, right? This obviously is easier said than done, but something that I think a lot of people just forget that it even is possible, right? If you know how to program immediately, you can become a business owner because you can just make your own business. You don't have to have any capital. You don't have to have a ton of skills. Maybe you have to host a website. Okay, maybe that costs you like 50 bucks a month or something, but still, you have the skills already to be able to start a business and something successful that you can do by yourself. So that's my point for number four. Unfortunately, there's not too much to talk about there, but that is another great option. And of course, a way that you can make money with programming without getting a job. So this last one is personally one of my favorites. It one, it's one that gets me really excited, especially when I hear people are actually doing it and having success with it. Uh, and if you are, please do leave a comment down below because I would love to hear about your experience. But it is helping local businesses by providing technological solutions, providing some kind of coding or automated solution. What I mean by this is essentially going to some local business, some small shop, some place that the owners probably aren't very technologically advanced, right? They probably don't know how to set up a website or they probably wouldn't even go out and seek that assistance, right? Going to one of those places, identifying a problem and then pitching a solution for them. Now, the most classic example is like going to a, uh, a really small shop and saying, hey, I notice you don't have a website. It's 2020, you need a website. This is an example of all of your competitors' websites. I can make you one that looks way better than those and that's gonna drive so many more, so much more traffic to your place, right? We're gonna make sure it ranks on Google, we're gonna make sure that that shows up and then when you wanna direct people, you can say, hey, you can check out my website, right? That's a really good example of something that you can do. Another thing can be as simple as going to, uh, I'll give you an example of something I did. So I worked at a summer camp. This is a job, but still, this is something you could totally do and I realized that in the office, um, they were having a really hard time actually picking the schedules for all of the groups that we had at the summer camp. So it was a bunch of sports they were participating in, essentially like no two groups could play at the same time. So I told them, I was like, hey, you know, I have a few spare hours. You want me to whip up a little program for you that automates this scheduling process? Because they were manually going through and for nine or 10 groups deciding, okay, you have to have this here. Oh, you know, you're having lunch here. And then they'd have to go through manually and look at all the schedules and make sure nothing conflicted. So I said, do you want me to make you know, a conflicting checker for you that just pops it up immediately? Do you want me to make something that does the automatic schedules? I did, they were super happy, and we estimated it saved about four hours per week um, in labor cost, right? And that's two of them doing it. That could save you for 20, that could save you like you know, 80, 90 bucks a week. That could save you 100 bucks a week, whatever it may be, how much you're paying these people per hour. So that is a really good way to make money is go to a local business, identify a problem, pitch a solution, charge something that makes sense, and then explain to them why they'll make their money back from the solution that you're pitching to them. One thing that I would be doing right now if it wasn't running this YouTube channel, I'm really into fishing. A lot of the places I go fishing don't have websites. They're super remote. They're really far up north. I mean, you know, they're just outdated. A lot of the owners just aren't very into tech. I mean, they're running a fishing lodge with like five or six cabins. And I said, hey, you know, these are all your competitors. They all have websites. I could hardly even find you. The reason I found you is because of some random phone number. Why don't I make a website for you? You know, I'll charge you 500 bucks and this will bring you so many more customers. You get one person to go to your lodge, you've already made all your money back, right? That's what I'm talking about and that's why I really like this solution because it is pretty lucrative. You can make a lot of money. You can also help a small business out at the same time and I think it's a win-win for both sides. So with that being said, that has pretty much been it for my five ideas on how to make money programming without getting a job. Please let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite, if you've been doing any of these, and if you've had success. And with that being said, I will see you guys in another YouTube video.